This appeal in the case of Marex and Sevileka raises one of the most important and difficult questions of law to come before the Supreme Court for some time. Marex is owned money by companies which it says are controlled by Mr. Sevileka. It obtained a judgment against the companies for the amounts owed to it. But according to Marex, Mr. Sevileka stripped the companies of their wealth and moved it overseas out of Marex's reach in order to prevent Marex from enforcing the judgment. Marex therefore sues Mr. Sevileka in these proceedings for damages and tort on the basis that he intentionally caused it to suffer loss by unlawful means and induced a violation of its rights under the judgment. Marex also alleges that although the companies may have a right to recover damages from Mr. Sevileka, they are under the control of a liquidator funded by Mr. Sevileka, who has taken no steps to recover the company's losses. The Court of Appeal dismissed Marex's claim on the basis of what it called the reflective loss principle. It considered that if a creditor of a company is unable to recover a debt that it is owed by a company because the company has suffered loss, and both the creditor and the company have a right of action against a third party, then the creditor is barred from pursuing its right of action. Only the company can sue. That rule was considered to apply whenever the loss which a person seeks to recover is a reflection of loss suffered by a company, and the company has its own right of action. Indeed, the Court of Appeal raised the possibility that the reflective loss rule may not be confined to companies, but may apply whenever two people have rights of action against the same person, and the loss suffered by one of them is a consequence of the loss suffered by the other. The reflective loss principle appears to have been understood to be a principle of the law of damages. Marex now appeals to the Supreme Court. This court unanimously allows its appeal, but we are divided as to the basis on which the appeal should be allowed, as I shall explain in a moment. The supposed reflective loss principle has recently been likened by a distinguished professor of law to a ghastly legal Japanese knotweed whose tentacles have spread alarmingly and which threatens to distort large areas of the law. It is said to be based on the decision of the Court of Appeal in the 1981 case of Prudential Assurance and on the speech of Lord Millet in the 2000 House of Lords case of Johnson and Gore Wood. We are agreed that Prudential Assurance did not establish any such principle, that Lord Millet adopted a mistaken approach which should not be followed, and that a number of decisions of the Court of Appeal should consequently be overruled. The Japanese knotweed has, we hope, been eradicated once and for all. In the view of the majority of the court, Prudential Assurance established a rule of company law under which a shareholder in a company cannot recover damages for a fall in the value of his shares or in the distributions that he receives, which is merely the result of a loss suffered by the company in respect of which it has its own right of action. That rule, which was confirmed by Lord Bingham in the Johnson case, is based on the law's refusal to treat such a loss as separate and distinct from the damage suffered by the company. It is intended to prevent another rule of company law, known as the rule in Foss and Harbottle, from being undermined. That rule places a company's right of action, and indeed its affairs generally, under the ultimate control of its shareholders as a whole, with individual shareholders having to bow to the general will unless the majority are acting unlawfully or unfairly. The rule established in Prudential has no application outside company law, no application to anyone other than shareholders, and therefore has no application to Marex. The only special principle of the law of damages, which might conceivably be relevant to Marex's claim, is that if it were to be an overlap between the damages claimed by Marex and any damages that might be claimed by the companies, then the court would take measures to avoid double recovery. 
a minority of the court would adopt a more radical approach and hold not only that there is no reflective loss principle of the law of damages, but that Prudential did not establish any relevant rule of company law either. That is not, however, the decision of the majority of the court. <laughs>